Hey everyone, Darren Eastman here. In today's video, I'm going to briefly cover the updated deprecation process here at GitLab for product managers. It's been revised as of today, September 16, 2021. I'm not going to cover in great detail the GitLab policy around deprecations. That was covered extremely well and in-depthly by Freeman Zimmer in a previous video. I will make sure that that video is linked to this one once I upload this one to GitLab Unfiltered. The only thing I want to call your attention to is that if you're new to GitLab, we use here at GitLab semantic versioning, and it just basically means that major versions is the versions that we reserve for significant changes or backward incompatible changes, i.e. breaking changes. So we typically, that's when you'll see those changes happening. Minor versions will have backward compatible changes. So we typically won't be introducing a breaking change in a minor version. And then the key call out is that for us here at GitLab, really the deprecation removal notices are really help to make sure that our customers and cu users and customers are aware of significant or backward incompatible changes. And so the communication aspect of this is super important. And that's why there's been a, a bunch of great work done by the team to, to simplify this process because we recognize that it's essential to ensure consistent communication to our customers. So let's just jump into the process. So very easy, it's actually a very straightforward process. It's meant to be, to be lightweight. And just really quickly, once you're aware of a deprecation, you want to go ahead and create a deprecation issue in the GitLab or GitLab project. And that issue you can create at any time. It's really meant for you to, as a vehicle for you to communicate async with all of your internal GitLab stakeholders, all of your stable counterparts that should likely be aware of and understand what this proposed um, change is going to be. Now, when you can, once you get into the release monthly release cycle, that's where you're actually going to be announcing the deprecation. The key callout that's different in the new process as of today versus the previous um, the previous process is that you only have to create the deprecation announcement once. And again, um, much thanks to the team, um, Sam White, Chase Southard, Marcel, Nico Schwartz, all of the folks for Noosh that have been driving this effort. Um, or we had actually created the initial issue to simplify this process for us. So again, the key change is that going forward, you only have to create the announcement once. So let's just take a quick look at what that looks like. If you're in the GitLab at all project, you can actually create your entries using the IDE. So you're in GitLab at all slash GitLab in this repo. And here's where things are at. But for the purpose of this quick demonstration, I just feel more comfortable in my IDE. Um, so I'll just pop over to the IDE and just do this really quickly. What I've got is I've got the IDE loaded. I've closed my GitLab repo. It's the same thing that you're seeing over here, obviously, in the IDE, but it's a little bit different. Um, and what I've gone to, I've navigated already, obviously, to the data directory, and I've simply gone to templates and opened up the example. So you go to dep deprecations, templates, and this is a very simple example, that YAML file that you will use for creating your deprecation notice. So let me go ahead and get one going here for the runner. I believe I've got... Okay, and see which directory I'm in. So let's go ahead and create a file here for the runner. It's a quick test. So I'll create a quick entry for myself here, which should show up automatically. Right. And that's obviously blank. I'll just go ahead and copy the template over. And then let's see, what is it telling us to do here? So first things first, we just wanna get rem remove the comments. That's pretty straightforward. Wanna keep the YAML structure. The other thing to call out as well is that the body comment, um, these comments here, you also want to remove in the final content. So it's as simple as that. And again, so once you're basically going to be entering your deprecation notice within that body content, you'll be committing your change and then creating a merge request. And so a quick example of how that would look like for me. I think I've got one going here. Uh, yes, I do. So that's that. So in this example, I just changed content blocks, right? I've added some content here, the name of the deprecation, the announcement milestone, the removal milestone. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, we were announcing this in 14.4, it will be removed in 15.0, the removal milestone. Here is the name of the feature and the capability that's been deprecated. And the, and the content block, here's where you make your best effort to communicate very clearly what the deprecation and change is. And so it's as simple as that. Um, you go ahead and commit this change, you submit a merge request. And once that merge request is submitted now, you simply have to, as part of the monthly release, go ahead and assign that to your tech writer. 
and they will help you with getting that reviewed and merged. And once it's reviewed and merged, again, the new deprecation feature and capabilities in Wolfon, this is what things will look like. The, the entry will be created automatically here on this deprecation docs page, as well as an entry will be created in that release post. So to recap, as soon as you're aware of a, of a deprecation, go ahead and create a deprecation issue, start the communication process internally, once you get to the release, the monthly release post, if this is the first time that you know you have, if you have not yet communicated a deprecation, you want to go ahead and create your deprecation entry just the one time, following the process that I just outlined. If you're comfortable in an IDE, you, in the GitLab IDE, go ahead and use the GitLab IDE, which is here. Um, if you're comfortable in a development IDE, go ahead and use the development IDE. The outcome is the same. You're basically just entering that YAML file, your content box into that YAML file, you're committing it and merging it. So hopefully that process is straightforward. Again, much thanks to the team that worked on this. And I'll see you next time I get called out to help do a demo. Cheers.